This is a big one. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Um, it is December 8th, and as you're probably aware, it is, um, it's like 60 degrees, 50 degrees. It is not ice fishing weather, but we're gonna go look for some ice. So, if you're new to the Crappie Chronicles, I'm Adam Bartusik. I'm going to meet up with my friends, Ryan Pinkala, Adam Griffith, and Matt Waldron. What do we do on this show? We go try to catch the biggest crappies ever documented on film. Um, we wanted to go back to the metro to start this season and uh yeah that i don't think that's gonna happen for a little bit so um we got to roll with the punches this isn't part of the plan but we're gonna go get on the road and i think we're gonna go have some early ice fun as long as all the ice didn't melt but i don't know let's go have a good time This thing is so slow. 36 bucks after 20 minutes of filling it. Dude, this thing is so slow. But it's the first gas I've found under $3 in like two years. So I'm not gonna complain. Man, it's the good old days. All right guys, so here's the deal. Logan's never been to a Hardee's and he's one of the pickiest eaters in the world in general. So we're gonna start a new series. It's called Logan Tries New Food. So this is gonna be so exciting. It's a Pink, little, little nerve wracking. Pink is just gonna wide open this year. We had Luke last year, you this year. Package secured. Secured. How nervous are you? It's just plain cheeseburger, so I'm not too nervous. Yeah, he, he was he talked up a Frisco burger, and then he was like, I'd like a cheeseburger. Then I chicken dough. <laughs> chicken dough real quick. <laughs> That's what happens all the time. Great your Hardee's experience. Out of all fast foods, it's probably top three. And one out of ten, I would say it was probably an eight, 8.5. Look at this. It kid. was pretty good. The fries were amazing. I, I give the fries I give the fries a nine out of ten. Look at you. Yep. We're 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 getting the big boy pants on to start off the season already. Hardies. With a Hardee's burger. <laughs> cozy tonight <laughs> we just got here we're at watson's hunting camp and uh per usual with our staying arrangements we're like yeah i don't really know where it is or anything figured it out and uh yeah we're gonna be cozy i feel really bad that i snore because these guys are not gonna sleep good <laughs> Ooh. 
Well, it started snowing and it got very windy and it's very cold. And I was not prepared for that to happen, uh, as you can see. So we're gonna go look for ice, which based on the conditions, I'm guessing there is very little of. <laughs> so this should be interesting. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Western Minnesota, where it's blowing 28 miles an hour right now. We knew this was probably not gonna be a great weather day when we got here. It's definitely colder than it was inspe uh, expected to be, which is good. We're gonna go see what we can do. We fish in all conditions. That's something you guys have seen, but right now it's pretty extreme, and uh, it might get a little rugged out there. Hello. <laughs> I only got three rods because it's windy. Hi. And so I got the short ones. No long rods today. Well, this one, we'll bring one. See how it goes. You got some new uh, meat skewers? Yeah, I got some freshies, dude. Gonna be in full use today. Let's hope not. What are those, Griff? I don't know. Never used one before. Hopefully, I don't have to. Have you? No, I own a lot of them. I know. Well, they're not. You're not supposed to use them. Oh. <laughs> You're supposed to own them, just in case. Well, yeah. Okay. Griff, you think we're going to actually get on a lake today? We might get on it. We might get blown right across it. So we'll see. It's uh, interesting. Let's play that. <laughs> okay, so we got the jerky for the day. Pink. Here you go. Breakfast. Here, just wait. Take a knock. Right. And you yourself can get some Wild River beef jerky with this beautiful promo code that I'll put right here. Right. We're gonna go fall through now. But not, we're gonna be safe. We're having a trouble getting the door open. Here's the thing, Griff. If you open your window, I think you'll fly right to me and I'll, I'll catch you. Oh my God. Pulling as hard as I could, and that door was not moving. Holy crap. This is what happens when Bart suggests a lake. A lot of ice. Saying it. This is a sick lake, though. It's clear. I don't think there's any ice. This sucks. We should go back to the metro. There's probably just as much ice there. What do you think? I think we should go get the boats. Should we just play court, go play cornhole? Or we go, yeah, cornhole tournament. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I think you're going to be filming a cornhole tournament tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the way it's looking right now. Warm getting up. it down, getting it down, warm up. Toss me that thing. Oh, yeah. Oh. Shoot. Well, we called an audible and drove like an hour west, or hour north, I mean. So, we got a little bit more ice. Still windy. Still windy. Very windy. <laughs> Look at the ice. It's waving. Or the ice is waving at us. It's not a good thing. like three on the nuts. Yeah, that sucks, let's go. Not it. Saying it.
This is a regional qualifying match. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are so screwed. <laughs> when I open this door, you're gonna laugh. <laughs> you are gonna laugh. So, uh, things have escalated. We're now entering a cornhole tournament and it's a regional ACL event. We're gonna get our whooped, but it'll be fun. We'll see how this goes. I'm 100% betting on the other team. 100%. We're on ESPN 8, the Ocho. That's what we're going for. This will be good. <laughs> You're gonna see how unathletic I am. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, but you have a D1 athlete on your team who did not do very well last night and also played basketball. Yes, <laughs> that is true. We'll see how Luke does. He said he was only trying 50% last night, but his 50% was not the best look. Yeah, if that was half. If that was yeah. half. This is gonna be fun to watch. Yeah, it'll be good. But we get six rounds. So we get six times to get whooped. Oh yeah. Started jumping, what a day. Swear to God, I need it now. I can't afford to wait. I just had a fan hit me up from Kuwait. Told him this would happen, and we not a minute late. Seen him down bad, now they trying to hate. Same one shot to hit me for the race. Got a man, now they coming with a place. Chatting numbers, fam, I swear. I thought they had him, to be honest, but uh, I think the competition gets stiffer. I'm not saying it's not going to go well, but like. Is we know we can hang. Kinda. Well, hold on a second. Time. Took it hold on a second. I know. That was that kid's first time, too. <laughs> oh, okay. Never mind. We can't hang. We can't hang. The other guy's like a legend in the oh, yeah. industry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dave Gens. He's like, yeah, of course. He's Dave Gens of like Cornell. He, he pioneered Western Minnesota Cornell. Oh, no, okay. He did say his name was on the board. That was sponsored the boards you were playing. That on. was the very first thing he said to me was, "My name is on the board." And I was like, "Flexing oh, hard, he was great." You know, these guys are pretty good. Uh, he told me that there are two professionals playing in this tournament, and it is not this team. So we're getting our mojo going. I don't know. I think I'm feeling pretty good about it. We got to try to make our way into the B division into the B bracket because the A bracket, that's just not happening. All right, so the boys are currently getting dusted. Our buddy Aiden just came in. We were like, dude, we didn't catch any fish today. We're trying to cook something. Turns out they have like a pheasant preserve down here and they were like, do you want to go hunt pheasants quick? So we're like, yeah, absolutely. So he just left to go get a dog and some shotguns and we're like, I'm trying to try to make this happen <laughs> before it gets dark. So yeah, we're loading up. We're going to go uh, do a little pheasant shoot and uh, put together a game plan for tomorrow. <laughs> All right, I want to preface this by saying, Great. homie just brought us out to their like private uh, game preserve here so we're just gonna walk this and hopefully stir up a couple pheasants that we can have for dinner so this should be fun. So we wanted to catch crappies. We didn't do that today, but anytime we can get our own 
doing it. So just scored this sweet pheasant. We're gonna go do the same thing we were gonna do with the crappies with this beautiful rooster right here. <laughs> Today did not go quite as planned, but the boys rallied. We had a heck of a cornhole showing, kind of. <laughs> and totally clutch, uh, we ended up getting hooked up with that little bit of a pheasant hunt there at the end. So that was like saving grace because we caught zero fish today. As you saw, we didn't even actually technically fish at all. So uh, the game plan has not changed though. We're still looking for ice. We're still out here. Uh, we're still staying at Watson. So tonight, Luckily we're eating pheasant meat. So we got that rooster all butchered up here and the game plan is to make exactly what I was gonna do with crappies, we're gonna do with this pheasant, which is gonna be really cool. Gonna make some enchiladas with salsa verde. So if you wanna make any of these type of recipes that we're doing in the show, grab this book right here. We got the frozen kitchen that came out this past winter and it's full of recipes just like this one. So if you wanna give them a shot, check this out on Amazon. The link will be in the description of the video. But as we get into this, we're gonna be using kind of the same stuff that we've been hammering home, but catch and cook, these are like the only two seasonings we're actually gonna use, a little bit of salsa verde, but what I'm gonna start off doing first thing is just chunking up this meat. I already deboned those pheasant legs and thighs, took all the little sinewy bones out. I know people don't really like those, but took all those out, got that meat, got the breast meat here. We're just gonna cube it up and uh, put it with a few veggies, make a little filling, roll these enchiladas up, and we got a little outdoor kitchen setup we're gonna be working with, should be pretty cool. So I'm gonna get this diced up and then I'll see you out there. First step, I have the breast meat. Like I said, I already deboned the thighs and legs. I have those here. This tends to be a little bit tougher meat. The breasts are still fairly tender, but what I'm gonna do is cut them across the grain into little bite-sized chunks, and then we're gonna cook those up in a skillet with uh, some onion and tomatoes and a little bit of salsa, mix in some cheese, and that'll be what our filling is. So what I'm gonna do first is just get these things diced up nice and small. This is still super fresh meat, but it's really cold out, so we took it out and put it in the cooler for a bit, and it is nice and chilled down now, so. Yeah. Okay, I got that meat all diced up and I'm just gonna put it in this bowl and just kind of set it aside for a minute and get all these vegetables in there as well. And then I'm gonna season everything. I just like to do it all one time for this filling. And then uh, I don't have to worry about doing like separate parts. I can just dump it all in the pan as soon as I'm ready to go. But I'm still super stoked that I came together with that hunt that we actually were able to get that meat. So one pheasant doesn't seem like a lot, but uh, this bowl of meat right here is gonna be plenty to make these enchiladas, which is super cool. With all the veg in there and everything, it ends up being quite a bit of filling when you fill up some corn tortillas. So I'm gonna do um, just a red onion and I got some tomatoes right here. So I'll probably do like two tomatoes and maybe about half that onion. We'll save a little bit for the topping and uh, we'll be ready to rip. So get in there and get everything sliced and done. I got everything in this bowl right now, so I have the pheasant meat, the onion, and the tomatoes in here. I'm gonna season it with two catch and cook seasonings, so I have the whiteout and the campfire. So that's like a garlic seasoning and a smoked salt. Those are the two things that I'm gonna season this with, and then I'll probably just put a little bit of chopped cilantro in there just to kind of brighten it up a little bit. And then we're gonna take it outside, get it in the pan, get it kind of par cooked. So we're gonna cook it like three quarters of the way because it's gonna cook inside the tortillas and the enchiladas in the smoker. So we're gonna get that ready to rip, and then uh, I'll show you how to put this little salsa verde together um, with some salsa verde and a little bit of sour cream. It's pretty easy to do. So we're gonna get that together, go outside, get cooking in our outdoor kitchen. Let's go. Okay, we just made it out to our little outdoor kitchen here, so I got a little butane stove set up out right here. So that'll be sweet. We'll get that ripping right away, get that pan heated up. And then we're running the Dakota Lithium Power Box to power this Traeger grill, which is awesome. 
So I got that set up to 350 right now. I'm um, gonna cook the filling, we're gonna build them, put them in this sheet tray, and then get them on the smoker for about 20 minutes, and then we'll have enchiladas. So I'm pretty stoked on this one. I've been excited to make this recipe. So the fact that it kind of came together with this little hunting mission is super cool. So I'm just letting this pan get hot. I'm gonna put a little bit of avocado oil in there, get it ripping hot, get the filling in. It should take about three minutes to cook, and then we'll build these things up, get them on the smoke. All right, so I just slid that in a little bit to keep it out of the wind because we're dealing with a little bit of that blowing on the stove. But what I'm gonna do, I have another bowl here. I have the salsa verde and I have a little bit of sour cream. So what I'm gonna do is pour like this whole jar in there and add like two scoops of this into it and mix it together. And that's gonna be our enchilada sauce. So what's gonna happen is as soon as the filling is done, we're gonna start rolling up our corn tortillas with the filling and then just dousing them in this salsa verde sauce. So I'll put a little bit on the sheet tray to get going. And then once we start laying them in, they'll be on that so they won't stick to the pan. And then as soon as we're done with that, we'll load it up with cheese and get it in the smoker. So I'm just gonna crack one can here. And uh, I have another one, so we'll see how this goes, but I might end up using two of these. But salsa verde, sour cream, that's it. All right, so that salsa verde sauce, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take a couple scoops and put it into the filling. Not a lot, I just don't want it to get it too soggy. But I'm gonna put that in there. And then I have this Chihuahua cheese. This is like super melty, awesome Mexican cheese. I'm gonna take one big handful of that and just plunk it into this filling. And that'll kind of tighten everything up, keep it from being too liquidy. And uh, then we're gonna start building these things. Like I said, it doesn't take really that long, but we're doing it outside and it's very cold right now. Which the benefit of that is we are making ice while we're doing this right now. So hopefully some of those spots we found today are gonna be firming up while we're busy cooking here. So I got the meat cooked about three quarters of the way and I'm just gonna shut the heat off and just let this cool down. I don't need to cook it all the way. Like I said, this is going in the smoker again for about 20 minutes. So um, I'm just gonna let this cool a little bit. I have this pack of corn tortillas getting soft right here. Just make sure if you're using corn tortillas, which are definitely better for enchiladas, that uh, you heat them up just a little bit so they don't crack on you when you roll them up. But we'll get to making here and uh, I have this sheet tray. First thing with the sheet tray, I'm just gonna use some of that sauce and layer it down in the bottom here. That'll help kind of just get it all over the tortillas, but it'll also keep them from sticking to this metal pan once we get it in there, because it will be heating from the bottom on that grill. So. All right, so I have all the enchiladas loaded in here. And what I'm gonna do now is take that salsa verde sauce, I'm gonna use about half of it and just drench these things. So there's some on the bottom of the pan, which will help just kind of absorb into those shells. And uh, as soon as I get these all covered nicely, I am gonna demolish this with cheese. <laughs> That's the best part about enchiladas. It's kind of a sloppy mess, but when it all comes together at the end, it is super delicious. So start with that and then I did get the big bag of cheese because I did not want to have to run out of this. So we're going to load these up big time. Oh yeah. And at least we're outside so we can make a mess. So that's cool. Heck yes, this is looking delish. So bomb that with cheese and then I'm just going to spread the rest of that deliciousness on top. And I do have a little bit of chopped cilantro, onion, and a jalapeno that I'm just gonna put on top. More than anything, it's for a garnish, but it's gonna be delicious. So I'll put the jalapeno and the onion on now when I put it in to cook, and then we'll just chuck a little cilantro on there right at the end. All right, so I got these all doctored up. They're looking pretty sweet right now. So I have, like I said, Traeger's at 350. I am just gonna pop this thing in there. A little nappy time for about 20 minutes. So we're gonna go back, warm up, because I'm frozen right now, and uh, come back on about 20, and this thing is gonna be melted and delicious. All right. All right, so this thing's been in there a little over 20 minutes. We just want it to be bubbling, and we're there. We are there. This is looking muy fuego. All right, I got a little 
fresh cilantro. I'm just gonna sprinkle around this bad boy. And then we're gonna run inside with it before it gets cold. So that cheese just starts to brown up nice, but the key is just to get it bubbling. So we got that salsa verde ripping hot, all the cheese is melted. And this thing is piping freaking hot. Sweet. All right, let's get in there. We got everything done, plated up. It's looking really delicious. This smells insane. And I'm really happy how these turned out, especially for cooking them outside. So we're giving our trusty guide, Aiden, the uh, honors. It's really good. It's really good. All right. So I think those turned out awesome. I already tried some and they were pretty dang good, but I feel like uh, that's pretty good for a guy that probably eats quite a few pheasants, so he thought it was legit. But we're gonna be on the trail looking for uh, a little bit of ice tomorrow, so the boys are getting all uh, ready to rip tonight, and we're gonna get back after it in the morning, so. Pretty early, but uh, we're gonna get things rolling here. So it's feeling very cold outside. The wind is a little less, which is awesome, but we're getting out there. We're gonna go meet up with Bart. He had a little shindig last night, so he had to bail, um, but he's meeting us up at the lake, so we're all just gonna load up. We got like an hour drive to where we're going, which is not ideal, but we have our fingers very crossed that the ice firmed up enough that we can get out there. There was like three, maybe a little bit more inches of ice out there yesterday. It was just kind of soft. So we're going to check ice conditions this morning. And if we can get on, awesome. If not, we're going to have to scramble and try to find something for today. So we had a good time yesterday, but we're ready to get out there and get after it and find some of these freaking fish. So we're just cleaning up all of our stuff here at Watson's. We're going to bail, get on the road, and go find us some freaking down crappies. Here we go. Actually, really good. It hardened back up. So, come on here. Yeah. But we've got four inches. This spud's kind of sweet. It's actually got a ruler on the back of it, so you just hook the bottom edge of the ice right there, and no more getting your hands wet doing the checking thing. The reason why we did think this lake was going to be fishable is because if you look out, there's no major cracks. This is one solid sheet, so. Usually you can tell if it looks like it's one solid sheet. I mean, you might have inconsistencies in ice, but you're less likely to have as many. So that's one of the, the things that we look for. I mean, obviously, wear your ice picks. We're with buddies. I've got throwable flotation that we're going to be bringing out and ropes just in case, you know, someone were to go through. And, uh, you know, we're probably going to be walking out with cleats on for a little bit. Depends. We're going to be checking like right here. There's a little basin, so we're gonna check just to see if we have any fish right here before going to one of the inside turns, but so far, I think we're good to go. All right, so we are out on a lake we have not been to. Uh, everything we kind of really wanted to look at immediately, like you saw yesterday, got destroyed by wind and went to open water. So we're out exploring new water. Uh, we looked around a little bit, haven't found much yet, so that's the thing. Just keep drilling a bunch of holes and looking around. We're going to go look at some uh, areas outside of shallow spawning areas and just weed flats because this is where those fish first enter the basins when they had the winter, so I'm going to go look at that. Absolutely hate you. you just drill oh, up this whoop, area. whoop, 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 Steven. Did they go that way? No. They're still up there. They're just on the bottom now. Right, some of them are right here. <coughs> and I do it. Huh? 
now just making sure everyone got across. The slick, not the deal. So I don't know if they're just like not fishing here or we just cannot find them, but the result is the same. So we're going to another lake that I think is like semi connected to this one. It's a little bit smaller, so it'll be easier. <laughs> it'd be easier to break down, but uh, whatever, we gotta keep moving. So it's like 11 o'clock right now. We're gonna try to still get something done here today and then uh, game plan for tomorrow, but we're not done with today. So we gotta go find some fish. Crap. Showed up, man. Jesus. Oh, she must have cooked everything. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Hooked up. We have a fish. It's a walleye. <laughs> yeah, like a five-inch walleye. <laughs> Look at that. Sick. <laughs> He's angry though. Wow. <laughs> I mean. Things have not uh, escalated at this point. <laughs> We're on to yet another lake. I was able to uh, break my PB smallest walleye today, which was pretty sick. Um, angry little one. Very, uh, very pale and sickly looking as well. So. That uh, so far is the only fish catch this entire weekend. So we need to rally here. I think the boys' uh, morale level's a little low, so we just had some snacks. Try to get things back on track here. Snacks and a little caffeine. And one more lake. One more. Finally tracked down one after miles and miles and miles. We got one. Ooh. It's a little guy. It's my new drag on my spooler wasn't set. So I was like, what's going on right now? Here, get down. There's a pile of them. That's a baby. Baby, baby. Let that guy go. Finally getting one. I was on a drop XL with the Mackie Mackie. Sun is going down. Fish are, they'll bite if you can get on them. Got one. So wrapped up in my deucer. Look at that this thing. Is a good one. Right there. Here. Little sunlight crappie bite. Little sunlight crappie bite. Look at that bite. one. That's a good one. That's a probably, really, that's probably a 13. almost 13, yeah. yeah. It's a nice one. Beautiful. Here we go. He just came in and floored. Nice little guy. Look at that. Just drop kick destroyed the Mackie Mackie. Look at how 
thick that fish is. Just a beast. We've been jumping lakes all day with very little success. Finally got to a lake with about an hour left of light. We got about 15 minutes of light left now and they're starting to slow down and chill out a little bit. Hopefully we can get on a few more like this. Look at that. So we just got that one. Just gonna see how big he is. He's so tall, I think. Yeah, he is over 13. He's about almost 13 and a half. Just a brick. Look at that thing. All right. So what we do with these big ones like this, anything over 12, we put back. We want to keep big genetics in lakes and that's how you do it. So now I'm gonna go try to keep up to Pink and Griff, see if we can get a couple more big ones. I don't know what's in store for us, but the early ice window here has been weird. It has not been great, but we're gonna keep getting after it. We got some big ones to catch. That was a good start. I'm happy with that one. Yeah, just pop this nice one here. Probably a good solid 12 inch or they're super tall in this lake. I mean, look at how the depth on that thing. But uh, what we're doing is we're just running around out here and they keep stopping under these white ice patches. Um, I don't know if it's because they can see us when they're out when we're out in the clear ice. I'm sure that's what it and is. And so they just kind of skedaddle under that and then they stop. We'll, we pop one or two and then they move again. And it's we just waters. gotta keep on keeping on. Yeah, it's crystal clear, but beautiful yeah. topics. Yep. Hold on. Pink's new name is Plucky. Okay. Oh wow. Just broke what it off. That? What just happened? I just broke it off. They like that white. Do you have any white plastics in your pocket? Hello. One just showed up. Stay. 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 Here we go. Yep. Yep. Oh God. What's up? Was there more? No one. No. Fine. All right. So the deal on that one was I totally switched to a white and glow. That's a chunky, but. I had gotten denied like four or five times on that motor oil. Switched over to the white and glow, boom, first drop. He just showed up out of nowhere too, that was sick. But we're still trying to find those schools. See if we can get out another biggie. That is not a biggie, but we're taking him home. <laughs> I think I got the smallest one in the lake. I got the wee little one, oh, eight incher. All right, back on. It is dark, obviously. We got a lot of cell phone lights on us currently, uh, but ended up turning out to be decent. decent. We, we made something out of literally nothing. Yeah. It was probably one of the hardest days we've had filming this show. It was like three, isn't it, of the day? Lake three, and then we checked like six of them yesterday. A few of them were open. We watched a few open up. Early ice has been very weird this year, but thank you everybody so much for watch watching. Thank you Watson's Hunting Camp for hosting us. We had a blast. Well, it. I think they did. Yeah, I wasn't We, we had a blast. Yeah, I had, I had to go do something else. They had a blast. Thank you everybody for watching. The merch store is now open for some select items, so go snag some stuff and we'll see you on the next one.